In this Debaco University video, we're gonna take a look at trends and cannabinoid accumulation in cannabis over time. All right, let's get into cannabinoid accumulation in cannabis. And here we're seeing a graph, and that's what we're gonna be looking at as part of this presentation. So first off, as always, try to provide you with the research article or some of the data was collected from, fairly recent here. Um, but again, welcome to check this out for yourself to get some more of, of the study specifics. So what did they use when we're determining these canna uh, cannabinoid contents? Well, a lot of times we're looking at totals, total CBD, THC, CBG. Well, how are those uh, kind of calculated? Well, it's important to know the formula that's used in the calculation for the total cannabinoid percentage. And here we can see uh, CBG, for example, would be the CBGA percentage times 0 0.878. And that would be added to the percent CBG to get the total CBG. And we could see the other conversion factors here for some of the other cannabinoids. Now this study was looking at growth rate, uh, dry matter percentage, and other things. So there are some more formulas provided there. But this gives you an idea when you're seeing the word total versus just CBC, for example, how they're calculating those numbers. Now, total potential cannabinoids. So when we're looking at some trends here, what's great is that they actually sectioned out some different cultivars. So this is a time series measurements of cannabinoid accumulation for chemotypes three plants in 30 hemp cultivars. Total potential CBD, THC, and CBC accumulation as a percent of dry matter based on weekly shoot tip sampling qualified by HPLC. Now the CBD is located right here. We can see here is the THC, and this is the graph for CBC. These curved models using third-degree polynomial generalization linear models. And then we see the cultivars here co color-coded uh, provided right here. And we're seeing overall general trends of an increase in cannabinoids uh, as we look at later weeks into flower. Some stayed flat, some actually decreased and then increased for a little bit. Um, some are kind of more linear, some are more exponential. Uh, so it's just important to take that into consideration. But you can see that there's two standouts here for the CBC. So again, if we're looking at isolating particular compounds, cultivar selection might be important and looking at the general trends here. Now when we're looking at the THC, what does this dotted line represent? Well, this dotted line is representing the 0.3%, which is considered to be the federal limit. So we can see here, some stay definitely well below that federal limit, and many of them did increase right above that. Once you're kind of getting into that, you know, week we'll say one and a half to two into flowering, many of these cultivars did exceed that limit. So it's important to take that into consideration. Now we're looking at the cannabinoid analysis. So this is kind of a kind of slide here. You might want to look at the research. Or just might want to pause the slide and take a look at it because there's some great information, but there's a lot of information presented here. So this is the cannabinoid analysis of the stripped biomass samples. Looking at the CBD to THC ratio included a 1.013 times CBN percentage as portion of the total THC. So just take that into consideration. Percentages and ratios are estimated of mixed linear models with cultivar as a fixed effect and the interaction between site and block as a random effect. So that's just getting into the details of the actual study, which if you want to learn more about, find that article and go look at some of the materials and methods and the details that they provided. Now, if you're just looking at like total cannabinoids or total CBD, THC uh, produced by the different cultivars, this is kind of that great little summary uh, table here. We can kind of go through and uh, do a little comparison. They are organized by the total cannabinoids uh, produced here, which is kind of a summary of all of the ones provided here. Some very high in uh, CBD uh, and some favoring more of the uh, THC that will be well above that federal limit there. So again, just kind of some great information there. Take a look at. It gives you some kind of that cultivar or ID, just something that you might be considering uh, if you're looking at cultivars to plant in your area. Now, another research article here, <laughs> this is looking at the accumulation of bioactive metabolites, and we see the link right here provided. And what this data showed uh, is kind of a nice graph presented right here, and this is looking at total cannabinoids compared to total terpenes. So, cured trimmed flowers were extracted for the 
terpenes and cannabinoids uh, composition by, uh, and this was determined by a GCFID uh, method of analysis. The total values for cannabinoids and terpenes in each sample were plotted. So what we're looking at here, we do see some uh, variability, but overall we're looking at the total cannabinoids and dry weight, and we're looking at the total terpenes produced, and there's a general trend. The higher amount of total cannabinoids produced Tend, tended to lead to a greater amount of terpenes produced as well. Now there's multiple potential reasons for this. This could be if you're maximizing out the cannabinoids, you have good growing practices, and that might improve overall chemicals produced within the plant there. And it's not, you know, as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a scatter here, but that dotted line does definitely show a trend or correlation. Some were really high um, in comparison. So again, just the general trends of everyone trying to produce more cannabinoids might be some benefits from the cannabinoids standpoint, but also increasing the amount of terpenes that are also produced can be advantageous uh, for growers looking at marketing their product.